Did you actually see this? Jaspar Carmichael Jack's ad campaign to stop hiring humans and use AI instead. So I thought I saw this on the internet. Artisans won't complain about work-life balance. The era of AI employees is here. The homeless person next to it is a really nice touch. Yeah, the dichotomy between these two is just so good. I think this was Gurgly who said this on Twitter, and I think he did a really good job, which is that the companies and the places that say they want to replace people with AI are the ones you want to run from. The places and the people that say they want to try to make people faster or get to solutions quicker are much more likely to be the ones that actually win. So this is probably comparing the difference between Devin, the one that claims to be a software engineer, versus uh, Cursor, which claims to be an editor that's going to help you. Oh, there we go. It continues to sit poorly with me that this company is advertising its LLM product as a direct replacement for software engineers, calling it an AI software engineer. This is sleazy marketing targeting non-technical CEOs and execs, suggesting they can replace devs with it, which we all watched what happened when I tried to use it. Um, in reality, the product is a sidekick for software engineers and one that has long iteration cycles. Here's a review of the actual dev. Yeah, this is one that's reviewed. For me, even non-long-term, long-form versions of these videos aren't good enough, right? Like, this is only nine minutes. I just don't think this is good enough to actually show you what it really, really is like. Like, you need to see and experience what the pain actually is, where you actually make it do bigger projects and try to get it to do anything, and you'll watch it just fizzle apart. I suspect that we'll see more claims from AI startups saying they are a one-to-one -one replacement for jobs and more suggesting that they can replace devs. This is because GitHub Copilot backed most of them in a corner with a $20 a month product that works pretty well. Yeah, GitHub Copilot's actually pretty amazing still to this day. I just, for me, I just, I quit using it again because I just feel like I, I lose some of my ability to learn new languages really like as quick. I feel like I get this, I get this weird like syntax fuzzy mint in my head about how things work uh mainstream media will for a while end up eating this or eat eat up this narrative non-technical ceos will flock and pay 500 dollars a month per agent and assume they can now fire existing staff then they get disappointed disappointed when they realize how this uh how this or how it's not oh my god how it's not how ah ah I got dyslexia for a second. Hold on. Let me, let me, uh, this, this sex daily gets in my head every now and then. Then they get disappointed when realizing how it's not how this works. Oh my gosh. I can't read. I can't read. I'm actually stupid. This is what an AI gold rush looks like. Uh, I, I actually really like this take because I think what people forget is there's this whole thing called legacy and legacy is what happens right after your AI makes something. And somebody needs not only to take that change, but also has to take that change in perspective of all the other changes. Now, the context window of an AI is not nearly large enough to be able to make those decisions at any sort of level that's wise enough. This is a great take, which is there are going to be, I think he's perfectly right on this, by the way. All these non-technical CEOs that are just going to go off and hire this $500 a month, oh, it's only $8 an hour, of course I'd want this, and fire people because of it, I think it's absolutely crazy. And in reality, it's going to actually probably tank their product because their product's going to go, oh, wow, we got AI, and then their features are going to just grind to a halt Things aren't going to work nearly as well. And then what's going to happen? It's just going to suck. Immediate tech debt right off the rip. None of these things work the way that you think they're going to work, right? I can't wait for the AI craze to die. I don't think it's going to die anytime soon because I still think we got another iteration after this into the next model that's going to be these promise, like promise big change. And the big change isn't going to, it's going to result in the exact same thing that we just got done seeing, right? AI powered, AI powered product. Yeah. When I see this thing right here, this is an advertisement for non-technical people to be baited into this because you must, you have to understand, you like absolutely have to understand that again, LLMs work by taking the input token and attempting to produce out the most likely output that would result from this input. Like that's not like, that's not a great way to program. Right, like that's not going to produce the program that you're probably going to want. Programming is not the most likely character, the token afterwards. That's just how you don't produce good programs. That's how you produce programs that don't even work. That's why APIs get like made up so often because it it is like the most likely sounding correct thing coming out. It doesn't mean it actually is the correct thing coming out. Anyways, this is, dude, the era of AI employees is here. It's not here. It is like not here at all. I think what we are, we are in the, we are in the era of realizing.
that text prediction's pretty cool. I think that's the era that we're in. And text prediction is pretty cool. Like, you have to admit me having a talk with Devin and it producing something that is, like, really cool comparatively to what has ever been. It's really cool. But it is not an employee. It is not great. It's not solving all these problems. It's not anything that they're promising. That's a huge difference betwixt the two. I wish people would just understand this. This is the era of AI ML jobs being available. Uh, I am proof of that. You are true. Yeah, very true, Ayla. Have you tried O1 Pro? I haven't bought O1 Pro, but I will buy that next. I'm sad about the developer sitting on the side of this ad. I know this web developer, <sighs> Devin. In fact, this actually reminds me of something else. There was, um, I wanted to look at this because I, I haven't seen this yet, but this falls under the exact same thing that just kind of dropped. People will lose jobs. Yeah. Uh, many new jobs will be created. I think much better jobs. Uh, we feel a responsibility to educate society as we see it. We'll be right about some things wrong about others uh, and to be as good as we can at being stewards of this technology. But you know, not everyone's gonna like all of the impacts, but right. this is coming. This is like, right. this is, a scientific achievement of humanity that is gonna get embedded in everything we do. The definition of work changes. You know, the someone that lived thousands of years ago that was trying to be like a subsistence farmer pro probably would look at what you and I do now and say, that's not really work, they're just having fun. <laughs> I think it will be so clear once these robots are off doing all of these other things and that there's some special human things and we don't really care about that much what those robots do in the same way that you know we don't care that much about the machines and factories making stuff for us. Right. But we'll find stuff to do that we really care about. I, I always think it's a little bit weird how kind of cavalier people are about. This change is going to cause a lot of people a lot of difficulty. Yeah, it's not as insane as it was portrayed because I didn't look, I didn't listen to it. But to me, it's still very crazy that they're just like, yeah, people are going to lose their jobs. But this is good. What we're, what we're creating is good. People are going to lose their jobs. I mean, there's a lot of people that will not be able to cope with the new world. Yeah, but he's right. It's good. I, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if that's good. I have no idea. Like, I think if we largely looked at the internet, I'm not convinced that the internet has made people's lives amazingly better, right? Like, I, I don't know, right? Like, I, I think that we also have a huge amount. We have, like, a, mental health issues through the roof. Like, I, I can't say we can say that technology has been a pure great. There's a lot of great things about technology. Like, I'm not a fool. I'm not one of those people that think that we should all return to monkey. Like, I, I will say that we largely don't have – we don't have to die by such stupid things anymore. Like, there's a lot of great things that have come with it, but not all things are great. And one thing we haven't lost thus far is the ability to work. And I know a lot of, I know this is kind of a controversial one, but the ability to work is a very important thing. You see people who, who can't work, who don't have the ability to work, it really hurts, it really hurts them, right? Like, it, it hurts those people in huge ways. And the thing is, is like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, well, I'll just be able to critically think and build whatever I want. Not everybody can just do whatever they want. There are a lot of people that don't have the mental capacity to just build whatever they want whenever they want. And UBI, giving them money, doesn't solve the problem of not being able to be out there and working and doing something and gaining a life, right? Like, there are people in, in the city that I live in, there's, there's some programs around people that kind of really have a difficult time uh, with some of the mental problems that they have. And there's various stores that are all aligned for hiring people that have some of these disabilities so that they come in, they can work and kind of have meaningful interactions with people and all that. And it really breaks them out of their shell, allow them to be into a much better position in life. And like, that's a real thing. And these kind of things destroy that, that, right? I'm not saying there's not going to be a lot of awesome things, but I'm also not convinced it's going to be all, all good, right? This kind of utopian thought that everything will be great once the robots can do everything. I just don't think so, right? I just don't think that's good. People feel terrified when their life changed, but actually it may just be a better place. It may also be a worse place. You got to remember that what, what is the underlying thing that happens here? What's the underlying thing happens here? Let's just say that Sam, Samuel, Samuel Jippity Altman is 100% correct. What is the underlying thing that happens here? Samuel Jippity Altman is king of everybody. He owns the software that everybody has to live off of. He is ultimately the richest, most powerful person, and he, des he decides what is right and wrong, and he is able to control effectively a huge portion of the world. Okay, it's not like, oh, everything's great. It's more like, actually, there's one person that is really great for, and his group of people is really, really great for. Overlord Sam will be the guy. Whoever owns it will be the guy.
right? They get to play God among man. All I see is that more power is condensing, right? A hundred years ago, more people had more say over their life. Now that power is being more and more condensed. It's, it's actually the chapter three out of, uh, there's a book called The Abolition of Man. And chapter three is all about how the, the escape from nature is just really a power struggle between a few people who actually wield the power, a bunch of people who are disillusioned that they actually contain the power over nature. And it really is this smaller and smaller and smaller world in which a fewer and fewer people actually have the real power. Because you and I don't have the power to escape nature. We purchase that power from other people, which is very interesting. So people think we all live greater than nature and all that. No, we, we are we are completely dependent on it. We just simply purchase it from, from other people. So it's a, it's a weird world to live in where fewer and fewer people get to make decisions for more and more people. I don't know. That's my, that's my whole take on this.